All right, so you're new to recording your vocals and mixing, and you have a song or a cover song or even a demo you want to put out, but you don't know how EQ works, how compression works, how reverb works. It's also much for you to figure out on the spot. That shouldn't stop you from releasing your songs, and that's how to show you how to use this simple plugin to release decent quality mixes on your own, even if you're still very new to mixing. If you're new, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, and let's get started. So before I show you the plugin, right? Now, you have to make sure your vocals are well recorded. You have to make sure that it's recorded in a noise-free area, okay? You don't want noise in your vocal recordings, okay? And you have a decent quality mic that you to record your vocals, all right? And make sure you have some character and expressions while recording because it's not a magical plugin that automatically makes your voice sound alive, okay? It just helps you get balance and clean it up a little to sound good when in terms of mixing, okay? So now, here is a plugin. It's called Isotope Nectar, okay? It's a plugin that literally listens to your vocals and try to use the processing and effects to see what best fits your vocal at the moment, okay? It's really easy to use with just a few click of a button and we're going to get it to sound good. So first of all, here's our project. Make sure your tempo is set because in mixing, set your tempo is important. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm a brother, I tell a bitch you can't die. 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 Try to call a father. So it's just recorded, no effects or processing running through it at the moment, okay? So now we're going to use the isotope nectar, okay? And then we're going to simply listen by clicking the vocal assistant, click on assist, okay? Now this is routed on our lead vocal track, all right? So we're going to click next. And then this right here is usually the compression, okay? We don't want the compression to be too aggressive, so we usually click light compression, okay? That is intensity, but we'll leave the vibes on modern, okay? Then we'll click next, and it's going to wait for us to play the audio okay so we're going to play from where our vocal started do not disturb me please do not disturb my peace baby girl i want you please do not disturb my peace do not disturb me please and if i'm a brother i tell her me she calm down yeah with the gucci and the prada i try to call her father yeah 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 balance it up and make a balance it up give me the vibe make a color beat up Balance it up and make a balance it up. Give me your divide, make a color oh, on you. Yeah, balance oh, it up and make a balance it up. Give me your divide, make a run up oh, on you. So you should know that when you're um, listening or rather using the vocal assist, you have to make sure that you select a portion of your track that has a lengthy vocal part so that you can actually access access it properly okay you don't want to use a short vocal part that it just stops playing midway okay so you can see i routed both lead vocals from here and this guy right here there are two separate tracks but they're all routed to the same mixer channel right you can see it here right here track two so now i'm going to turn off the background vocals for now because i assume for most recordings you do you may have one or two or even three backup vocals going in i'm going to try to also use that as well it's done assessing it okay now we have our pitch that is kind of like our auto tune, but this doesn't um, work as aggressive as auto tune. What it does is just helps correct pitches that are off, okay, or notes that are off in your vocal, okay. Then right here we have our gates, that is our noise gates, okay. We have our first EQ, then we have our DS scene, then our second EQ, all right. Then we have a compressor, and then we have reverb. You can also add a couple of more effects, right? You can add another compressor if you like. You can add delay, you can add um, harmonies, if you want harmonies, you can add saturation. And dimension is just um, where you can add, add chorus, flanger, or phaser, okay? So I'm going to just take that. Of course, we will not be using that, okay? You may try that in your own um, um, mixing process, but I don't think we'll need that, all right? So when we open the pitch, right, when we click on the pitch um, section right here, we just set the key F sharp major, okay? Now that's our root key for the vocal key, okay? and then we click on correction so I can actually turn it on and start working. And then this is the strength and the speed, okay? I'll get to turn this all the way up, okay? So we're going to listen. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want. 
Now you can notice a little bit of latency on the track. Now this is a glitch you may face while using Azure Top Nectar in FL Studio. Okay, all you have to do is just turn it off, right, and turn it on again, and then. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace, baby girl. I want you, please. Do not. And if it still persists, you can reduce the latency of your uh, audio interface. Right, come to options, audio settings, um, open your uh, interface panel, and then reduce the eyes. For example, you can see um the buffer length right here i'm using is um about 47 milliseconds okay or 2048 samples okay so because this can take a little bit of cpu okay or more than a little bit do not disturb me please do not disturb my peace baby girl i want you please do not disturb my peace do not disturb so now you can see we have our Pitching right on our gate. So now I always advise on the gate on because usually when it compresses, it tends to bring everything up, including the noise floor. So we want to make sure that we do not have much of that noise floor in the track. So you can just turn on your gate, and this just helps control the amount of noise you may hear in the track, if any at all. So if I take it all the way up, do not disturb me, do not disturb my peace. You, can, you can see it's chopping up some parts of the vocal. We don't want that. Okay, so we'll take it down. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. And this, when you hold down, when you click this and you hold it, you can adjust the range of which it actually works because gates usually work in a range, okay? Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. All right, so let's go with that. So this EQ looks fine, right? This is just to take out the resonance of the track. Well, let's listen again and see. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want... Yeah, it's correct, right? Just get the resonance of the track. So you can just leave this, let it be, all right? Because I'm assuming you're a beginner who is still very new and, and mixing is still a big deal for you. So you don't need to worry yourself for now about this, okay? So we're going to come to the DS and this helps because when you record your vocals, right? Some S's like some siblings okay when you pronounce some so, some words or sing sing some lyrics they may have a lot of siblings in, so the s helps to reduce or control them okay so it doesn't sound too harsh in the ear do not disturb me please do not disturb me please do not so you can notice the do not disturb me please notice how sharp the s are when i turn it off do not disturb me please do not disturb my peace baby but when, I, but when I turn it on, listen to how it sounds now. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I you can see how more controlled and how soft it is to the ear, right? And right here, we can have this is where actually under EQ again, where it helps to take out the low, muddy end, okay? And also helps to brighten some parts of the high frequency of the vocal, okay? So sometimes I do recommend you adjust this a little bit, maybe about around. 100 hertz okay you can see the frequency move right just click on this take it to about 100 hertz most times and you should be fine then we'll come right here again click this guy right here flats i pass yeah so once it's at 100 hertz somewhere around 100 hertz okay do not disturb me please do not disturb my peace baby girl i want you please do not disturb my peace do not disturb me please now let's take a look at the compression okay so the ratio okay the ratio is fine the attack the attack is a bit too fast let's take it about let's say five to eight milliseconds okay what the compression does compression just helps to keep your vocal level so that other parts not sound overly louder than some parts okay it tries to keep that balance in loudness level okay so it doesn't shock or surprise your listener when they hear your vocals okay it sounds controlled sounds clear okay do not disturb me please do not disturb my peace Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if you're my brother, I tell her, Mr. Khan. And then we have our reverb plug right here. And the reverb just does what it does add space or life to the vocal. Try to put it in a space, okay? So if I increase this right here, you can see I'm going to have more of the effects. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want. So we don't want that, alright? Try not to be too excited by this, okay? We'll just reduce this, okay? Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm my brother, I tell her, Mr. Calm down. All right, here we have an EQ for the reverb plugin where it actually scopes the... um frequency range the plug is going to actually affect okay that's because reverb can affect a wide range of frequencies from the low end to the high frequency so we don't want it 
to be crazy on the low end because it's going to cause a lot of muddiness again and the high end it may cause a lot of harshness again so just copying the right frequency range can really help your reverb sound great and they already do it for you with the vocal assistant so we don't need to mess with this it's already fine all right but you can tweak the amount of reverb to your taste but do not go too crazy just a little bit is fine most times all right and then we can add delay maybe you want to delay to your vocal but always to take the delay um, backward a bit okay that's be before the reverb so now we can change the kind of delay you want if you want digital tape but let's just go with digital okay and then you can, let's link this one the left and the right channels to be linked so that the effects apply to both okay so let's see how it sounds do not disturb me do not disturb my beat Now it sounds a lot. Now usually there are ways to actually use a reverb like side chaining and many other ways to use uh, to use your delay. I mean, but I'm not going to bug you with that, okay? Because like I said, this is a tutorial for people who are absolutely new to mixing but have a demo or have a cover song to put out, okay? So this is just going to get you started. I'm going to just reduce the delay a lot, okay? I just want to hear it a little bit in the background, nothing too fancy or nothing too pronounced, okay? Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb me. Then reduce the feedback. So feedback is, like it says, feedback, how much of it you hear, okay? Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb Let's turn it down even a little bit more. Let's say, take it to a five or so. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm my brother. Now it's there, just playing in the background, and that sounds fine, alright? So, right here, we have our backup vocal. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm my brother. So depending on the kind of backup vocals you have, right, I advise you just route your backup vocals to a single bus, right, so that it works. A bus is just a combination of other channels that share the same effects, okay? Like for example, these four vocals, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to share a single channel, okay? I'm going to select this right click track crowding create sub mix and i'm going to call it vocal backup fx okay then you can see they're all routed you can see this is all routed unlike this guy that's routed straight to the master so now let's open up the vocal assistant again but before we do that we have to look at the region where it has the most recurring part of the background vocal which is this region right so then i'm going to open it up again and then hit vocal assistance next lights yes next then it's now it wants us to listen i'm going to play it so it listens to it what if I vibe tonight? What if I vibe tonight? You know, yeah. What if I vibe tonight? What if I vibe tonight? Balance it up and make a balance. What if I vibe tonight? What if I vibe tonight? You know, what if I vibe tonight? What if I vibe tonight? You know, what if I vibe tonight? What if I vibe tonight? So now this is the um settings it came with. I remember this is. F sharp major, okay. Correction, of course, speed as always. Then now let's go into the gates. Remember, the gates is always on, okay. Most times the gates is fine the way it is. And then the EQ is also good, but now we'll come to this EQ right here, okay. We're going to select this. So because this is back of vocals, all right, you want to actually cut out even much more from the vocals than you have in the lead vocals. So you're going to take this maybe all the way to like 200 hertz or 250 hertz okay let's just say 250 somewhere around 250 all right then you do the same to this guy right come right here again 250 all right let's see 250 somewhere around 250 does it have to be exactly 250 all right so now let's go with that then we're going to adjust the volume okay we're going to reduce the volume 
Balance it up and make a 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 balance it Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And, if I'm and the good thing with having this as individual tracks is you can still have individual control, right? Rather than just having them sharing the same bus immediately, you can control the loudness of this. You can also pan them, all right? You can also pan to have them on separate sp space in your headphones, all right? So you can hear them more clearly. Do not disturb me, please. Do not disturb my peace. Baby girl, I want you, please. Do not disturb my peace. Do not disturb me, please. And if I'm my brother, I tell her me she calm down. Yeah, with the Gucci and the Prada. I try to call her father. You hear me, you're the vibe, make a call her my own. So with this, you have a decent mix that helps your recording sound polish, but by no means this doesn't compare in any way to a pro vocal mixing session. Okay, this is just for absolute beginners who are still confused by what an EQ is and what a delay or reverb is. All right, they are still trying to get their foot wet, but still want to put out music in the meantime. So this is the fastest way to get started with mixing before you go deeper into more effects and how to actually use them all right if you found this tutorial helpful don't forget to leave me with a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button for more tips and tricks see you soon cheers